Yo, what's going on today's video? I I got the how to make a battlegrounds game. This is part 12 to the series. This is going to be adding an accessory system and stuff. You guys know most battlegrounds games, they are they have accessories for like um they have free ones, stuff you get for like VIP. You can buy like the VIP game pass, and then they have ones um where you unlock certain um cosmetics and stuff after you get a certain amount of kills and everything so i'm just going to be doing free ones and uh or a free one and then one that you unlock after you get a certain amount of kills and stuff so yeah let's go ahead and get straight into it and oh thank you guys for all the love and support you guys been showing on the channel really do appreciate it let's go ahead and get to 15,000 subscribers and let's go ahead and get straight into the video okay so the first things first right we're gonna of course have to create an accessory folder i already have it made simply because i just didn't feel like going to find the accessory stuff for this, so i'm just going to break it down to you guys so inside of server storage just like how we made the character folder you're going to click the plus icon server storage you're going to insert a new folder rename that folder to accessory folder then inside of the accessory folder is you're going to have the accessories now i'm explaining how to do it differently so if it's an accessory right if it's an accessory like a cape and stuff like that right so where like you know the class is an ex is just a regular accessory all right guys so back sorry i have to do something for my roommate but anyway um so pretty much you guys see how we have a regular accessory like a cape and stuff so your regular accessories you're just going to enter that into the um accessory folder and then you're just going to name it you know whatever you want and everything right um this is how the accessory came, so I don't really, I wouldn't really say there's anything you have to really do, aside just naming it and stuff. Now, for things like outfits and stuff, you're gonna have to insert a folder into the accessory folder, name, name it whatever, um, you know, outfit. I just put outfit one, but you would put the name of the outfit. And if you have like a kill requirement, you would put in parentheses, like for this hundred plus kills, so the player has to have a minimum of 100 kills to be able to wear this outfit and stuff right and then inside i have a pants and a shirt with um uh some ids i got from the toolbox and stuff so here's how you would do clothes and that's how you would do an accessory so yeah so that's the accessory folder then we would get into let me just double check okay we're good and then i would get into um the uh i'm trying to think uh oh i would get into making the ui and stuff so we're gonna have to make an accessory ui which is pretty much it's very similar to the email GUI, so we could just go ahead and click it, duplicate it by pressing Control plus D, right? And then you can just rename this to Accessory GUI, right? And then we're going to, um, actually, yo, hold on one second. All right, we're good. Just had to make sure it wasn't frozen or anything because that's happened to me before. Anyway, okay. So as you guys can see, we have Accessory GUI, or we renamed it to Accessory GUI. Now we have to, you know, obviously change um some stuff in it so let's rename the scrolling frame to accessory frame oh that's nice well frame so accessory frame right i'm going to make it visible so we can customize it obviously we're going to have to move it since as you can clearly see it's you know in the way of the emo um frame so let's just move this over right then inside of the accessory frame um you know we have a ui grid layout ui stroke you're going to want to um rename the button to equip accessory button right and then you're going to set the text to whatever the name of the accessory is so the names have to match the same name inside of server storage so for the first one we would have cape and then i'm gonna set the text color to red and then we're going to make the text color equal to red whenever they i mean what we're gonna set it equal to green whenever they try to equip it so i'm also going to make the buttons a little bit smaller because there's no reason for them to be um that so that big so like 40 maybe or yeah i think that's good so yeah so then i'm gonna duplicate this control plus d and then for this one um i'm going to do oh wrong thing i'm going to do the out outfit one so like i said the names have to match exactly as it is so i'm just going to say outfit one make sure you include spaces everything it needs everything it has to match exactly as it is case sensitive so then you put your kills requirements so you let the player know that they have a, they have to have a certain amount of kills to be able to equip whatever the accessory is right and then um i believe that's really it honestly oh and then of course rename the button to well first set the text to a and then rename it to accessory button button and then you can uh move it over and then yeah that's really it so you already know make the accessory frame no longer visible and then we're done with the ui now we can get to the scripting so 
Let's go ahead and open up the, lo open up the local core script. We're going to scroll all the way down to the very bottom, as you guys probably could have guessed, because we usually add stuff at the bottom. We're going to create a variable for the accessory GUI. So local accessory GUI is equal to player dot player GUI wait for child accessory GUI. Then we're going to set up two functions. First, we're going to set up the function for opening the menu and stuff. So accessory GUI dot accessory frame dot ex or sorry not accessory frame accessory button accessory button dot mouse button one click connect function close parentheses enter and then you're simply just going to say accessory GUI dot accessory frame dot visible is equal to not and then the same thing. So accessory GUI dot accessory frame dot visible. This pretty much just makes it so that you can um, enable the accessory um, menu or disable it using the same button. Then we're going to move on. And then um, I'm going to say for i comma v in pairs. You're going to say accessory GUI dot accessory frame. You're going to say get children. Enter. You're going to say if v is a text button. We're going to go ahead and set the functions. If v is a text button, then v dot mouse button one click connect function. Close parentheses, enter, you're going to say if V. So this is pretty much we're setting up the function for whenever a player tries to equip or unequip an accessory slash outfit. You're, so you're going to say if the text color, right, text color 3 is equal to color 3 dot new 1 comma 0 comma 0 because by default the color should be red, which means it's not equipped. Then enter, then we're going to set the color equal to green. So text color is equal to color 3 dot new. And then I'm just going to put 0 0.33 comma 1 comma 0, right? And then you're going to fire their mode event. So core event, fire server, in quotation marks, name of the event will be accessory. And then you're going to need to specify the, uh, the accessory event, which is equip in this case. And then you're going to send over whatever the name of the accessory is, so v.text. Then we're going to set up the else if to pretty much do the opposite. So you could just really copy and paste this. So control C, control V. And then you're just going to say the opposite, so 0 0.33, 1, 0, then come down here, and then this is 1, comma, 0, right? Um, and then, uh, wait, I'm confused. Why is there an, oh, my bad, I forgot to delete that if, but yeah. So then that, and then this would, of course, just be unequip, and then we are done with things on the local side. Then we can move to the server script. So let's go ahead and open up the core server script, and then we're going to create a variable up here. You can really just copy and paste the animation folder or the character folder, control C, control V, and then, of course, just making one for the accessory folder, so accessory folder. And then um, for this, obviously, it's the accessory folder is inside of server storage. So accessory folder, boom. Then you're going to scroll, not necessarily all the way down, but kind of. So you're going to go down here where we left off with the emote stuff. And then you're going to go uh, right here. And then press enter. You're going to say else if event type is equal to notation marks accessory. Then enter, right? Then you're going to create two variables. First will be accessory event. Wait, accessory. Okay, let me just make sure I spell it right. Accessory event, which is equal to argument number one, which is pretty much uh, one of two things. It's either you're equipping something or you're unequipping something. And then, of course, the name of whatever the accessory is. So, accessory name is equal to arg2. Then, we're going to set up an if statement. So, first, we set up equipping. So, if accessory event is equal to equip, right? Enter then if accessory name is equal to and then remember naming is important so cape if we go back to the accessory thing and we go back to the text button you'll see that that the text is at the cape so this is um the code you would do for like an accessory so enter and the code will probably be different for each accessory and stuff like that as like some may be accessories to go like to to a player's head their leg or you know so it really just depends so you're going to say local accessory we're just going to clone it over so it's equal to accessory folder, my bad. Accessory folder, regular brackets, then you're gonna throw an accessory name, outside do clone, All right? Then you're gonna say accessory dot handle dot weld. Keep in mind, this is for me with my specific accessory and stuff. It may, it may be a little different for y'all, but yeah. So I'm just referencing the weld. I'm just welding it, so dot part zero. So we're gonna just say dot part zero is equal to accessory dot handle and then same thing accessory dot handle dot weld dot part one 
is equal to character dot humanoid root heart and then we're going to parent it to the character so accessory dot parent is equal to character and it's very important that you parent it to the character the reason for that is so that we want to keep all our accessories parented to the character so that we can um find them whenever we're trying to unequip them so we can easily find them and then um i'm going to throw in an else if for when you're trying to equip an outfit so in this case it will be outfit one so i'm going to say else if accessory name is equal to in quotation marks outfit one space and then 100 plus kills boom right and then for this it would be a little bit more since it's an outfit so first you're going to set up a variable for the outfit folder so outfit folder is equal to accessory folder accessory name right and then you're going to create some two values a previous shirt id in value and a previous pants ID. These are both um, string values. The reason you're doing this is simply because um, you want to be able to give the player back whatever their default, like whatever clothes they were wearing before they equipped stuff so that if they unequip it, it'll just, you know, they'll have their regular clothes. So you're going to say previous shirt ID is equal to instance.new. This will be a string value. And then you can parent this to the character because if like they die or something, obviously their clothes will reset. So there would be no point in saving this. So you're gonna say previous shirt ID dot name is equal to previous shirt ID. And then you're gonna say previous shirt ID dot value is equal to character dot shirt dot shirt template. And remember, this is it pretty much is like RBX asset ID two forward slashes colon and then followed by the um, asset ID. And then once you're done with that, you can pretty much just copy and paste control C control V. Then you're going to do previous pants ID, then control C control V control V control V and then pants and then come down here and you have pants template. Right. And then um yeah that's really that's really good with that and then we're going to come down here and then we're going to assign uh the new values so we're going to say local shirt is equal to character find first child shirt so if you can find this shirt dot shirt template is equal to outfit folder dot shirt dot shirt template and then um again just copy and paste it for some time control c control v and then you're just going to say pants so control c control v control v control v and it changes this to pants template control c control v right and then we're done there so we can go out of this we finished all the equipping now it's time for the um Oh my bad, my bad. I actually forgot one thing. <laughs> I forgot. So you guys see how this is this requires you to have 100 plus kills. Here's how you do the kill requirement. You would go here, so whenever they try to equip, you would say and player dot oh my bad dot leader stats regular brackets quotation marks. And then you're gonna say because remember it's a space, so total kills. All right. Then go on the outside, you're gonna say that value is greater than equal to whatever the requirement is. So 100 right then you're going to skip one end and then now we're going to set up unequipping so else if accessory uh, event is equal to unequip then enter right then this is much more simple so you're going to say if string dot find accessory name comma outfit so pretty much um this is a general thing like if like pretty much this goes for like all types of outfits and stuff because keep in mind we named um we uh i'm trying to think uh what's it called because remember all of them are going to have the word oh well now that i think about it you guys are probably going to name y'all stuff other stuff but i would recommend having one word inside of the um each outfit's name and stuff so that you can easily identify it for me this works since I'm, i would just do outfit one outfit two outfit three but yeah so we're just going to look for the word outfit and then if we find it then that means they're trying to take off some clothes so then you would just simply reset their pants and shirt id back to the um whatever it previously was so you would just say character dot shirt dot shirt template is equal to character dot previous shirt id dot value you could just copy and paste this control c control v and then just pants then pants template then previous pants id 
right? And then we're done there. Then we're going to throw the else if. So we would say, or sorry, no else. Because that would mean it's an accessory because it's either accessory or clothes. So then you would say local accessory. And then you're just going to find this why I said it's very important to make sure you name it. So you would say, wait. I just realized something. Wait, cape, look like that's where you can Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So, character, bottom first child. This is why I say it's very important to parent it to the character. Because we're literally just looking at the character. Then you're going to look for the name of the accessory, right? Then once we find it, we'll destroy it. And then, yeah, that simple. Let's go ahead to test to make sure this works. As always, if you guys want access to any one of my scripts and models, you guys can become either a channel member or a Discord subscriber. Link to either one of those options can be found in the description. Highly recommend that. And shout out to all of my Discord members, all of my channel subscribers. I really do appreciate it. I mean, my Discord subscribers and channel members. Thank you guys. And stuff. I do love my subscribers too. But anyway, um, so if we click it, we can open the accessory. We can open and close the accessory menu. So if I try to equip a cape, boom, you guys will see the cape is equipped. Text turn green. Then if I click again, boom, it's destroyed. I can equip, unequip, equip, unequip. So at the moment, I have 100 kills. So it'll allow me to equip outfit one. So boom. It equipped, boom, it unequipped. Now, let's say I didn't have 100 kills. Let me change that and stuff. So make sure when you're testing, if you're testing something that involves kills, make sure you adjust your stats as need be. So let's say I adjusted my total kills to like 50. I clearly don't have it, right? Here's what will happen. The text will change simply just because um, we made it so that it just automatically changes, but they're not going to actually get the outfit and stuff because I don't have 100 kills. If I had 100 kills, like I just had a few seconds ago, then it would give me the outfit. So yeah, that's going to make an accessory system and stuff. As always, if you guys find any bugs or have any suggestions involving it, for sure, just let me know. Still, hope you guys are enjoying the Battleground series. Really do appreciate all the love and support you guys on the channel. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for watching.